Welcome back guys and what I'm going to be talking about today is how I set up my SE5 for bushcrafting. Okay then, so in my previous bug out bag video, which I'll put a link to here, um, my fixed blade that I carried within that bug out bag was a Mora knife. Now Mora knives are great, they're cheap, they're actually they're, you know, good little bit of kit, they do the job well. Um, but if I'm literally just out doing bushcraft for the day, stuff like that, um, instructing and stuff like that, what I'll do is I'll carry this because it's a bit more of a heavy duty knife. All right. So what I'll do today is I'll just talk through a little bit about the knife itself, how it's set up, what I've got within this actual sheath here. So the knife itself then, this is an, an SE5. There's the knife there. Okay, so quite a big solid bit of kit. Um, you can see that it's got a full tang, so that piece of steel goes all the way through it basically, and it's made from 1095 carbon steel. Now carbon steel is prone to rusting, so that's why on the blade here you've got the powder coating, that's why they've put that on there. I know a lot of people out there aren't a big fan of the powder coating, a lot of people modify it by taking it off, um, just exposing the bare uh, steel. Um, doesn't really bother me to be honest, I, I find it fine. A lot of people also, you know, because you can't use it with a fire steel, then they'll take it off for that reason. Personally, that doesn't really bother me. Um, if I needed to take it off, I could do, but it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, so it's a drop point knife. As I said, it's got a full tang on it um, and the powder coating. So it's got a micata handle. So that's what the handle's made of here. Really nice handle, okay? So quite a big handle. If you've got big hands, um, my hands are relatively big. It gives you a good, you know, purchase, a good grip on the knife and the slightly sort of roughened edges on it, you know, make for a really good grip when you're, when you're doing your woodcraft, uh, sorry, your bushcraft stuff and all that. Um, I've added a little lanyard on the end just for a little bit of security. So if you are using it as chopping, if you're using the end of the handle rather than the whole thing, if you're using that for leverage for chopping, you've got a bit of security there as well. I've tied that on through the glass breaker at the end. So that's what that is there. It's got a glass breaking point on the end and also on the handle, it's got the bow drill divot there that you can see. Uh, I haven't personally used that myself yet. I've only had this knife, I don't know, six months so far, um, but I haven't used it yet and I will be using that at some point in the future. But not a bad little thing to have on there. When you are using it though, it needs to be in the sheath for obvious reasons. You don't wanna have that knife blade sticking out as you're you know, concentrating on spinning stuff around and making a fire. Okay, um, it's got jimping on the back of the blade there. So some quite aggressive jimp in there. So the reason for that is so you can get your thumb on there and actually get some purchase. So if you're doing a more sort of detailed task, making say feather sticks and stuff like that, you can get your thumb on there, you can get your forefinger on the front there, away from the cutting edge, and actually get some more leverage in there, doing your more detailed tasks. Um, this type here then, this has got the partially, partially serrated blade that you can see there. I know a lot of the purists out there will be naysaying that you know and saying oh yeah i wouldn't do that i'd have a pure blade um straight edge but personally you know i do find that quite handy uh cutting through rope and stuff like that it's going to you know get through a lot quicker if you've got that on there but you know each to their own yeah um the blade itself then so from the actual the whole blade is 13.2 centimeters and the thickness is 6.5 millimeters and you know it's quite a hefty bit of kit um it's uh, it comes with a sheath obviously so i'll whack it in the sheath there quite a decent sheath actually you can obviously i've got the pouch added to it there but quite a, a decent sheath the only thing i found with it though is the cl the belt clip that it comes with i'm not a big fan of those you can it's obviously easy to clip it on either your trousers or a belt or something but what i'd rather have personally is a loop so what i did with mine is i added a leather loop onto it and it kind of drops it slightly so it hangs slightly lower on your leg but not too low and also it gives it a positive you know loop to go through your belt so that's that's how i've set mine up anyway um you can see there then it's got the pouch on the front there um i think they're a great little bit of kit um you know you could put your fire kit in there you can put a small survival kit in there or whatever you fancy you know and that little pouch does come with a little tin so I'm going to open up the pouch there and the first thing I've got in here is actually my knife sharpener. So I've got a full knife and knife sharpening stone there which is a mega little bit of kit. I think it's a good idea to keep that with the knife isn't it because you've got it with your knife at all times then. 
um, and then going into the pouch again what I've got is the actual survival tin small survival tin or tin that comes with that pouch and I'll go through that in more detail in a minute and then right at the bottom here then what I've done is I've put some cordage right on the bottom of the pouch there and I've just wrapped it in a bit of tape as well that does two things it keeps it nice and neat I mean it's wrapped up anyway but it keeps it even nice and more neat and you can use that for tinder and obviously lots of other applications as well but I've got a fair whack of cordage there and that's the sort of cub cord there it's not paracord it's about half a breaking strain of paracord but it's pretty good it's decent enough for making shelters and things like that construction tasks so decent stuff so the actual tin itself then so this is the tin that comes supplied with that SE pouch um, as you can see it's quite small um, but it's big enough for putting a, a compact survival kit together or maybe a fire kit so you could put in your your pre-prepared tinders and stuff like that right so the first thing I've got in the tin is these two ranger bands so two basically bands of rubber and these can be used for a securing kit you know potentially helping to build things you know securing say the frame of a, a shelter or something like that but also the best thing these are for is for fire extenders so once you've got some kind of flame going um, to transfer it and to, to extend it you can actually use a piece of this rubber and that will burn for a long long time okay so rubber is obviously good for that sort of stuff the tin itself then what I've done is I've covered this in black tape um, not too much but enough to sort of like provide me with a little extra bit of resource there and as we all know black tapes mega for lots of good stuff so you know you can use it for tinder itself you can use for repairing items you know all sorts of stuff it's, it's just great kit as we all know so I've got a length of tape there and obviously if I was going to be opening this up and just using something from the inside I'd stick this on something to prevent the adhesive getting wrecked um, so tin itself then it's got the old SE logo logo on it pretty cool logo skulls and knives you can't go wrong with that pretty cool um, so going around the outside again we've got some more tape that's just basically to keep all the contents completely watertight and again you know you can use that as a little resource of tinder or whatever um, on the bottom I've put another strip of tape just an extra bit of tape I've used every sort of square millimetre of this for resources and then there's the contents right there all right so first thing you can see is some snare wire see there's a, a fairly decent amount of snare wire there for setting your traps and stuff there's a small amount of medication there so I've got some Imodium, which is good for diarrhea. Uh, then I've got some anti-inflammatories and some painkillers. Um, a couple of little tiny little mini silums there. So a little bit of a light, light, light source there. Uh, and then I've got one of these little expandable towel things. Okay, I covered this in my other um, survival tin video. These are great for lots of stuff. So you could use this for Tinder. You could use it for, you know, cleaning out wounds and stuff like that. Even potentially dressing wounds, things like that, okay? But they're, they're quite a handy little bit of kit to have. I've got a NATO button compass there, which is an absolute bomb-proof little compass. As you can see, it's tiny, but it's, it's actually, you know, it's a good bit of kit. Um, it's quite a solid built bit of kit. And, you know, you can um, hide this on your person as well. So if you were in some sort of E&E scenario... Um, you could dig into your survival tin and, and hide this within your clothing quite easily because of the size of it. Okay, next thing I've got here then is a very compact fishing kit. So you've got the uh, the line wrapped around a cu another couple of little silooms there, little glow sticks. Then you've got a couple of lures, a couple of weights, and a, a collection of um, the hooks and also a couple of swivels in there as well. And that's all together in a, a small little bag. Uh, next thing out of here then, this is some of the, the tinder sticks. I forget what they call these things now. I think they're like called fire sticks or something like that. But I got that from the, the Bath Bushcraft shop. And it's basically, it's like compressed cotton wool in uh, in some sort of material that helps it basically you know, light easier and stuff. You obviously spread it out and great for starting fires. 
Then this here is a compact little lighter. So I've got tape around it because this actually works by putting um, lighter fluid in it. So if you don't kind of seal it, it's not going to last too long. And, you know, before you were to potentially go to a dangerous area or something, you'd want to make sure that it is kind of still operational. Yeah, so that's still working there. Um, but yeah, that's just a little mini lighter, basically. And um, as I said, you just want to make sure that's prepped before you do go anywhere to make sure it's, it's still usable before you potentially went to an area where you might have to use it for real. Okay, next thing I've got is the obvious ferro rod. You can see I've used that a little bit. Um, not diddy, but not that big either. So I'm sort of, sort of a medium sized one, but a fairly, fairly decent sized one there. And then what we've got with that is the striker itself. And, you know, that might seem a little bit um, big to be putting in here, but to be honest, it's, it's really thin, as you can see. So it doesn't take up much space at all. And that's the key when you're going to be building something like this is to be using tiny little items, nice and compact. So this here is a very, very small uh, light. So this is by um, True. And basically you've got a tiny little light. You can see that against the size of my hand there. It's tiny, but it's actually, it's not bad. Not a bad little torch at all, that. And you've got some spare batteries for it too. I think it's, um, it's been sat in there a little while. The uh, Oh yeah, I put the batteries in upside down to prevent it from going off. Yeah, so batteries in upside down. I did check this before I packed it. Um, but yeah, just in case, because it works by screwing the end and you know, making the connection. So if it was pressed inside the box, it could potentially go off. Um, so the batteries in are upside down and there's the spare batteries there as well. So you've actually got a fairly decent little mini torch there. So you could be using that for, you know, finding your way through the forest or reading your map in the dark stuff like that or even signaling you know okay tiny little bit of fat wood so not massive but big enough to you know potentially start decent fires and stuff give you a bit of a, a head start if you're in conditions where the weather weren't particularly great and this is some more uh, firelight material here so this is called fire strip and it's basically impregnated with you know firelight and material in there Okay, on the bottom here, what we've got is some plasters. So, to, again, with the uh, with the other med stuff there, you've got a little little bit of first aid kit, and then here we have wound closures. So a little bit more first aid kit as well. So some basically butterfly stitches, wound closures, and then also with that, we've got a couple more um, like small dressings, basically. Obviously, this is all compact right inside here. You have to pack these things out to get everything in. But yeah, I've got a couple of small uh, graze plasters, they're called here, but they're basically little small wound dressings. So if you did get a bit of a, a bit of a nasty cut or graze or whatever, you know, you can treat it. Okay, next thing in here then is a Fresnel lens. Okay, so another fire starting method if it is nice and sunny. They can use that to magnify the, the sun's rays to start a fire. next thing out of here then is a water bag okay so this is one of those ones a little bit like well the same type I had in my big um, water uh, survival kit and this holds a litre and you can actually boil water in this okay you can do it over hot coals obviously not an open flame but this is the sort of plastics that's used in um, the old oven bags for your chicken or whatever so you can actually boil water in this. So it not only contains it, you can use it for purifying it. And then linked in with that is purification tablets too. So I've got six purification tablets in there as well. Last thing I've got right at the bottom here then is some tin foil. Okay. So this is the non-stick stuff as well. So quite a big section of tin foil as you can see there so you can use this for signaling obviously it's nice and shiny isn't it um, you can use it for cooking meat in so wrapping meat or whatever or even you know, like a potato or something put it into the coals of a fire to cook it 
um, and you could you could actually form like a little bowl out of it as well um, to put water in whether that's just for washing whether that's for cleaning things cleaning out your meat and stuff or potentially you know again cooking but you'd have to be quite gentle with the cooking on something like this because it's quite thin uh, foil so that's all the kit that's held within the tin right there Alrighty, so that's all the gear there that's held within the tin. So going from the left bottom then, we've got signal in here. We've got quite a bit of fire starting kit here, so that's quite well covered. We've got fishing and trapping. Then we've got not a bad amount of medical kit here. Water, collection, purification. And then on the outside of the tin itself, we've obviously got the black tape, the uh, full knife and knife sharpener cordage and then let's not forget the tin itself because that's obviously a useful resource as well so you can use that for making char cloth you know boiling a small amount of water that sort of stuff you can also use that tin for signaling too because it's got the shiny underside so not a bad amount of kit in such a small tin over here okay then so that's it for today what I've gone through there then is just how I set up my knife with my survival tin, the contents of it, why I carry it, what it's for. If anybody else out there has got some good ideas, different, you know, different looks at it, everyone's got their own ideas and their own approach, put them in the comment section below. Let's have a discussion about it. Thanks for your likes and follows. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll be seeing you again soon. Cheers.